This is a fairly deep impression die. So we're going to work this in stages. Instead of placing a small piece of urethane here, pressing it as hard as you can, we want to slowly start to move the metal down into the die. The goal is to push the metal into the deepest part of the die first, and then you can focus on all of the other detail. So I've already done that a little bit here. I used that small piece of urethane and I pressed it. I'll show you really quick. I'm not pressing it all the way. I'm not pressing it as hard as I can. I am just barely pressing down on it just so that the metal starts to form down into the die. Not very much at all. I am going to now trim, but I'm gonna leave a little bit more metal around the design itself. Because this is so deep, you do need to allow for metal to be drawn into the die. So I'll probably leave, I don't know, we'll start with about a quarter of an inch all the way around, anneal, and then we're going to do round two of pressing. Now I have trimmed my metal to about a quarter inch all the way around. I then kneeled it and I'm going to place it back into the die. Then I'm going to take a small piece of urethane and I'm going to place it up near the head of the moth because that's the deepest area. So let's lower this down again a little bit. And I'm going to center the area that I'm working on under the pusher. So this area where the urethane is, is not directly in the center of the die itself. So it's going to look like the die is off center, but the area where the force is being focused, that is gonna be centered underneath the pusher. That's what you want. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I'm not gonna press it full force. I'm just gonna try and continue forming that metal down into the design itself. Let's take a quick look. It's not gonna look a whole lot different, but you can see the head has started to show a little bit more. We're going to, we're gonna do it one more time, a little bit harder. So there we go. At this point, because I'm not pressing the metal into the bottom of the die at the moment, the pressure gauge isn't even registering any pressure. It is, I'm going as slow as I can to start to get that metal down into the impression die without causing the metal to stretch too much at the edge where you're likely to get cracks. Scoot this over. Oops. Sort of on the wings. Press it a little bit more. But not all the way. Let's take a peek. So again, just a little bit more. I'm, you can already tell this is so much harder than it was. So I'm gonna anneal it again and we're gonna just continue that process. 
here's what we have after another round of pressing. You can see everything is starting to slowly take shape. This is what the back looks like. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to anneal it, and then I'm going to start working with even smaller pieces of urethane to pick up all of the detail. By using small pieces of urethane and making sure that they are within the boundary of the design itself, meaning they're not large enough pieces of urethane to press over onto the surface of the dye, that is allowing all of the pressure from the urethane to be focused on pushing that metal down. If you use, say, a larger piece of urethane like this, and you placed it here, as you start applying pressure, some of the force is going to be pressed down into the dye itself, but a lot of it is going to trap this metal against the surface of the dye while you're trying to push the metal down into the design, and that is going to cause the metal right at the edge to thin, and that's where you're likely to get um, splits. So use small pieces of urethane that fit within the design itself with no overhang. So the deepest part of this die is the skull at the center of the moth's head. So that is where I wanna start focusing most of my effort, which is right above my fingernail. I have this collection of <laughs> very well used urethane pieces and I keep all of the crumbs. The crumbs are fantastic for small areas like this. So I am just going to fill that head area up oops, with lots of these little crumbly bits. If you don't have crumbs, you can use shears to trim off you know, the corners of a larger piece of urethane. Um, you could use paper but urethane works wonderfully. And I'm also trying to make sure that all of that urethane stays within the design itself. So let's see how this does. I might need to add a little bit more. Center that and press again. Okay, let's take a look. Just dump that back in. Let's see if that helped. Not very much. So let's do a different technique. Let's try, um, let me try a slightly larger piece. And by larger, it's like a quarter the size of my fingernail. Um, but that's considered larger. And then I'm going to, I'm just looking through my busted up urethane collection and I'm gonna find a piece that I can rest on top of it, but that's still not going to trap the, um, the metal along the outside of the design when we press it. So we're gonna just go with this I'm being way too careful. Okay. Flip it over maybe. All right, so this is what we're going with. This is our little stack. Let's take it back up to the press. Lower the platen a little bit so I can squeeze that under. And let's press it again. So this time I went a little bit too far. You can really see, here's a good example. This is the thickness of my metal, but because I applied a little bit too much pressure, the tool steel pusher pressed against the metal right here, and it has thinned down 
almost half the thickness of what it was previously. So that means I'm gonna have to be extra careful now when I'm pressing the tail of the moth or the, the, the end of the moth to make sure that I don't tear the metal there. A little bit more detail, but not quite enough. So this area is fairly work hardened. I'm going to go ahead and anneal it again. And I think I'm gonna try it with some paper next time. This is a wadded up piece of paper towel. Um, you could use packing paper, you could use cardboard, it doesn't really matter. Um, so just the same as when I use the urethane, you wanna make sure that the area that you are working in is centered under the tool steel pusher in the press. And we're gonna try it again. We'll press it one more time. press it enough. No, nope, I'm going to press it a little bit harder and we'll take a look. Should have got us a little bit more texture. And you can see that, let's come down here. Got a little bit more going on, but I think we need to add a little bit more paper or urethane just to build up some bulk so that we can actually get some more pressure focused on that head area. I forgot to film it, but I continued to use paper and urethane to press a few more times. I still don't have all the detail in the head, but I'm going to anneal again. And you can see I've started to pick up a whole lot more texture than I did before. Now, right here, along this edge and along this edge, I'm pretty sure I overpressed it. So this is where it's gonna be most likely to split. I'm gonna try to avoid that. Um, but I might have pressed it too much too soon, so it might split there. Um, but next I'm just going to anneal and we'll just continue the process to force the metal down into the die, trying not to trap any of the metal on the outside against the surface of the die. I'm using more paper. I'm gonna try rolling it up. I sort of made this little cocoon type shape to fit down the body of the moth. We're gonna see if this will work. Let's give it a shot. to guess no I think we'll need to add some more material yeah so I'm just going to leave that paper there but I'm going to let's see we'll grab 